Hello, welcome to what's bubbling at Zim. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at the documentation which has been revamped as of Zim 5.3. So let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com, and we can click on the docs here and pull up our documentation. I'll zoom in on that a little bit. There are the modules. There's a wrap module, a code module, a display module, a methods module, a controls module, a frame module, and a meta module. And any of these open up. So if we wanted to see more information, say on a button like that, we can expand, open the button. And we can see the, the, the parameters that are needed to pass into that button. We get a quick definition of what it is. This is a Zim class that extends a Zim container, and which extends a CreateJS container. And a description of the button, as well as any links, examples of the button. And then a description of the parameters along with their default values. Now when it says parameters support duo, parameters or single object with properties below, what that means is when we go to make a button, we can pass in uh, the parameters uh, without any words. So for instance, uh, if we're looking for a width, we can just say 160. So give me a new Zim button, round brackets, 160, 50, quote, hello. And so we can pass in the parameter values in this order. But sometimes, say we wanted a button that said that and we wanted zero for the corner. We would then have to, if we did the orders, we would have to say 160, 60, quote, hello, null, 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 um, zero. Okay, uh, that becomes a bit of a pain, especially when you're trying to get to far away parameters. So the Zim Duo technique is to be able to pass in a single object parameter, uh, such as in the example right here, where we pass in a squiggly bracket, squiggly bracket, that's an object literal, with properties that match the parameter names. And then we can get to any ones we want to right away. If I wanted to, I could get a default button and only say corner colon zero, and that's it. So squiggly bracket corner colon zero, I would get a default button with a zero uh, for the corner. Okay, so that's what it means by the Zim. Uh, by Zim Duo technique there. We are also given the methods. Now uh, we'll come back to this because there's more methods than just these. Well, I guess I'll say now. There's also all these Zim Fourth methods and we're going to see that. That's actually a whole module's worth of methods. And there's also CreateJS uh, easel documentation for more methods like on and off to add event listeners and cache and add child and stuff. So those are the traditional methods that come with um, the container that this extends. There's also properties. All of these displays get a width height, width only, and height only, as well as any custom properties, as well as any CreateJS easel doc properties like the traditional XY rotation scale and blah, 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 blah. And the documentations will tell you the effects of using Zim Optimize on this component. Zim Optimize, if we set that to true, it means our components won't update the stage automatically. So if we were to use a slider and we're dragging the slider, if we have Zim Optimize true, we won't see the slider actually drag or change. Um, it's assumed that you're going to have a change event. Uh, oh, here's events that are listed as well. And an event, this one doesn't have any, but it says go see the create yes. If we were looking at the slider here and we scroll down to the events, we see it dispatches a change event. So if you were optimized true, then in your change event, you would want to do your own update stage, which makes sense because you're probably changing something. So why update the component, make your change, and then update the, the stage again? Uh, so that way, uh, with optimize, you can reduce the number of, of stage updates if you're making for mobile. Okay, each of these things, well, let's look at this one. It's a slider. We can view the code. So this will go out and view the actual Zim code that created the slider. Um, we can view uh, the Zim bits. Zim bits are a series of 64 small bits of interactivity. Um, this is going to the bits and it opens up the filter automatically 
with slider and it tells you there's one of seven results. If you want to see the results you can kind of click this little square and see the results here. Well you can click the square and kind of see the results by stepping through like that. So you see that each of these has a slider in it and then you can just press on the thing and, and try out the slider. You can view the code and scroll down and you can see somewhere in here there's a slider right there being used. It's using the Zim Duo technique. Okay, so if we go back, there's a slider. We can go back to the docs, or if indeed you were in the bits browsing the bits and you wanted to get to the docs, here you just click and now it's uh, docs on the slider. So that's that's how that works. You can, anytime you see the bits, so if we go to the dial, there's the bits and we click in here and these are dials this time, dials and indicators, and there's examples of the dials. That's a dial there. Okay. So um, let's just take a look at the types of things that are in these sections then. In the Zim wrap are a bunch of short forms for things like Zog is short for console.log. So this is a global function. If we open that up, it says it's a short version for console.log. So you can just say Zog hello and put commas in Zog several things at once if you want. Zid is for um, a shortcut for document docket element by D. So you can read about those little shortcuts. And then there's the code module, and the code module has some general code to make things easier, some conveniences like to be able to shuffle or, or uh, copy an, uh, an object, um, which is harder than you might think, and uh, things like damping and proportion damping and stuff. And then code also has a set of HTML helper things like setting cookies and finding out the scroll X and stuff. Also check to see if uh, we're on mobile device, asynchronous connection, so that's like Ajax and being able to extend classes. So that's your general code stuff. All that works without CreateJS. Then there's the display module. This used to be called the Zim build module, and it was down underneath all of the functions. These were started off traditionally as functions, but now have turned into methods. So uh, these used to be shown first as a bunch of functions you could do. Now they're shown second as a bunch of methods that all work with these Zim display objects. So the di Zim display objects are the basic container shape, bitmap, sprite, movie clip, and then your shape, circle, rectangle, triangle, and blob. Yeah, can you see that? Let's make that a bit bigger for you. And then the components like labels, buttons, sliders, dials, etc. Loaders, text pads. Uh, we might want to move these into alphabetical order, but really some of them rely on others, and they've just been sort of kept in the order in which they were created for the most part. I guess that's all right. Same with the methods. The problem with methods is if we alphabetical, if we turn them into alphabetical order, then drag and no drag wouldn't be sorted next to each other and so forth. And same with move and animate, which relate to one another. These ones are all of the, the little methods. Anyway, all of these objects can be placed on any of the Zim display objects. Sorry, all of these methods can be placed on any of the display objects which are up here. So object.drag, etc. All right, if you make a, a button, if our button equals new button, that button is a display object, you can then say button.drag and you'll be able to drag the button. Okay. So that's that stuff. And then there's finally, uh, by the way, this module used to be called the Zim Create module, but now it's called Methods. And then here we've got Zim Controls. This used to be called the Zim Pages module, but now it's, it's turned into a bit more than just, uh, it was initially preparing you for pages with hotspots and lay, layouts and stuff like that, layouts and grids and guides and things to help you make a page. But we started adding things for parallax and scrollers and swipers and motion controllers and game pads and emitter, the emitters of particle emitter. Uh, and in general, we're just just calling that a set of controls, um, sound wave to be able to control things with sound, etc. All right, Zim frame is the same as always, very important. That's how you can, uh, you should certainly open up that and have a look there. That's how you can load in images and and sound, and it makes your your canvas for you and your frame and your. Uh, 
you know, it's basically the framework, the stage for you, and that kind of stuff. And various meta things, such as Distill. Distill, what that does is you can make your app in Zim and use the whole of Zim, and then you run Distill, and it will tell you which functions and method or which um, methods and objects you've used, classes you've used, and so it will distill, it will reduce Zim and minify that for you, only the commands you're using. So that will make your Zim smaller. So you should do that. And then Zimify is a way that if you have a create.js if you have a create.js object, uh, for instance, if you were grabbing from um, from Adobe Animate, you had uh, some shape from your library, that won't get all of those Zim methods unless you Zimify that. If you Zimify it, then all of a sudden you'll be able to center that on the stage. You'll get all, and you'll be able to drag it in one line, etc. Okay, so there we go. Now, the create module, now called the methods, um, like I said, used to be, it started off as just zim function, so zim.drag round bracket circle. You can still use it like that. You can still say, if we open that up, uh, here it is, um, zim.drag circle. You can do it that way, but obviously it's a bit easier to just say circle.drag. Okay, so circle dot drag round brackets would do the same thing as zim dot drag circle. So the documentation has been changed now to really represent this more so as a display method and starting to ignore running it as a function. Now that we've moved all of the main things like containers and shapes and bitmaps and sprites and movie clips into zim itself, zim extends all of the create.js ones. Um, usually we're using these things as Zim methods now, rather than uh, Zim functions, okay, or uh, methods on the display objects. All right, so that's the changes uh, in the documentation and a little bit of an overview of the documentation. Hopefully you're having a great time using Zim. Uh, remember that there's the updates here that show you the various updates, including Zim 5.3, where we talked about the module name changes and slight order change, okay? As well as introducing a new Zim sound wave and you can see all of the updates of the other ones. We will show you when something is an improvement so it works better than it used to. Uh, or you can get more out of Zim than you might have been able to before, and we'll also show you when something breaks. Okay, for instance, we used to use the Zim dot add display members. I don't. We use that internally. I don't think many people were using it, and that's been fully replaced by Zimify, which was you know a nice shortcut. And now we've had reasons, in a sense, uh, we don't want any methods hanging around that aren't. Uh, display method, so we remove that and put it all into Zimify. But anyway, if you happen to use this one before, then that's a break. And as you go through here, you can see that there's, there's improvements and there's another break where parameter orders may have changed because we've introduced uh, more things. Okay, so we try and keep that to a minimum, obviously, but uh, sometimes it's in there. And if you do update from one Zim to another Zim, then uh, and something doesn't work, then please go and, and check out the the updates. Okay, they're also here. So there's the Zim zip and and there's a link to updates as well back on the main page. I'm Inventor Dan Zen here at What's Bubbling at Zim. Have a great day and please look forward to more bubblings or catch up on any bubblings that you've missed. Ciao. Of course, there's the whole Zim Learn section, which has the the main videos, uh, the uh, captures, Zim captures, and so forth. Uh, many, many captures on very core Zim features. Okay. Ciao.